So yeah, the title of this video is What the fuck did I buy? Number two, my physical media update. Now I've got a few films, they've in, been, well they arrived within the, uh, the last few days. And there's a couple that I picked up in uh, Kex as well, or CEX, Kex, I don't know. What, how are you supposed to really pr pronounce it? I've always said CEX, but who knows? Um, so first off, is uh, I talked about this in one of the videos when uh, I had the issue with the two copies of uh, Eye of the Tiger coming. Um, this is one of the other films that I ordered. It is uh, the Seven Ups, and this is a sort of sequel slash sort. Of, I don't know. What like sister to the French Connection, which I do have. I have the French Connection one and two collection. Uh, awesome movies. The first one's amazing, and the second one by um, John Frankenheim is also pretty decent. It's not as good as the first one, but uh, the the second one is well. The first one is just William Friedkin was a friggin' genius. Yeah, he made some funk, but. The French Connection, The Exorcist, Sorcerer. What else did he make? To Live and Die in L.A. Um, Bug. What did he? Did he make any? He made The Hunted as well. The uh, Tommy Lee Jones and Benicio del Toro um, wilderness like survival movie, I guess you could say. But uh, this is a sort of like sister stroke companion to uh, The French Connection, starring. Uh, uh, Roy Scheider, uh, who is, again, a, a friggin' genius, a, a master. And I think he's unfairly uh, sort of, like, underrated as a, as a character actor and as a lead as well. Because he's Chief Brody in Jaws. He's fantastic. He's in, um, I want to say 52 Pickup. I think it is 52 Pickup. I'm not 100% sure. He's also... In uh, The Last Embrace with uh, Janet Margolin, directed by Jonathan Demme. And uh, also we can't forget his, his turn in the Steven Spielberg uh, produced uh, Sequest DSV from the early 90s, starring Jonathan Brandis, who I mentioned in the... Not the last video, but the Why the 80 Slaps video, who was in uh, Sidekicks with uh, Chuck Norris. Um, this one is uh, directed by, um, it was actually directed by the producer of uh, uh, The French Connection, Philippe D'Antonio. Um, this has one of the coolest car chases of all times in it. All times? All time in it. Um, it's a very cool movie. This is an upgrade to uh, a Blu-ray. No, to a DVD, because this is a Blu-ray. This is an upgrade to a DVD. And uh, really looking forward to checking this out because there's some pretty decent uh, looking special features on this. And again, this is the Signal 1 release. It would have been awesome if it had followed in line with the, the other Signal 1 releases. So that's number one. Uh, these next three are pickups from CEX. Uh, the first one is a animated classic from the um, late 90s. Uh, it's directed by uh, Brad Bird who also uh, in created and uh, directed The Incredibles and The World of Tomorrow and worked extensively on The Simpsons back in the day. Um, it is The Iron Giant. I love this movie. This movie is fantastic. Um, I haven't seen it in ages. My DVD is in DVD corner down there. And it's the old snapper case, um, double-sided. I think it's double-sided, flip-a-side uh, case. Um, this is the uh, signature edition. It has um, a couple of special features on there. It has the uh, the Iron Giant theatrical, uh, the Giant's Dream featurette, commentary by Brad Bird, um, deleted scenes, vintage featurettes, and a motion gallery, uh, featuring the voices of Vin Diesel, uh, James Gammon, Cloris Leachman, uh, John Mahoney, Eli Merenthal, Christopher McDonald, M. Emmett Walsh, Jennifer Aniston and Harry Connick Jr. Um, 
Vin Diesel is the voice of the giant. Uh, yeah, really cool. Um, I was going to save this for uh, a video that I'm planning to do on animated movies. Like my favourite animated movies that are in my collection. Um, but as this is a, a, a pickup video, I thought I'd slam the uh, Iron Giant in there. Because I literally only picked it up two days ago. Then we have Rennie Harlan's awesome Sylvester Stallone mountaineering movie, uh, Cliffhanger. Uh, again, I just picked this up in, in Kex. It was um, super cheap. I think it was like four quid for the Blu-ray. Uh, I don't actually own this on uh, Blu-ray. Um, unless, is it in the Stallone collection? I don't know if it's in the Stallone collection. If it's in the Stone, Stallone collection, which I don't think it is, because I think that's Warner Brothers stuff, and this was made by... Uh, it says Studio Canal. Who made this? I can't remember now. I can't remember what the DVD is. I think the DVD is Studio Canal as well. Uh, but yeah, Cliffhanger is awesome. Uh, also, co-stars... Um, Michael Rooker, John Lithgow, um, Craig Fairbrass off of EastEnders, a.k.a. every single voice in a Call of Duty game that you can think of, um, and all those terrible, bore, like, British gangster movies. But it's weird, because Craig Fairbrass is a decent actor. Talk about being typecast. Um, so, yeah, love Cliffhanger, added it to the collection. Now I've got... more action movies than I than I care to even think about. This next one um, is, again, this is an upgrade to a Region 1 DVD that I have. I don't know if it's in DVD Corner. It might be. I haven't really checked. Um, or it might be in storage. Um, I know this has got a 4K from uh, Arrow in the States, but I don't think it's had a release over here. Um, it's Carlito's Way. Now, Brian De Palma is a very odd director. Like, some of his early stuff, specifically something like The Phantom of the Paradise, is very bizarre. It's an odd movie. And then you look at his other stuff, like... Uh, like Blowout. Blowout. An amazing thriller. An amazing tense thriller. Again, the same could be said for... Um, where is it? Dress to Kill. Dress to Kill. Like it's a, it's like a, a slasher movie, but not a slasher movie, but also sort of a like homage to uh, the Italian Giallo movies from the from the sixties and the seventies, like the Mario Bava stuff. Um, and then you've got like a sort of slash, not slashes. Uh, what they call it. Scanners type of movie with the Fury, which also, by the way, a great movie, fantastic score by John Williams. But then you get to like his big studio stuff. Like he's directed three gangster movies. Like he started the first one was um, Scarface. Like Scarface is not even not just a cult classic. It's a fucking classic. It's Scarface. He followed that up. With The Untouchables, another fucking amazing gangster movie. Fantastic um, performances from everyone in that. Like Sean Connery, Kevin Costner, um, Andy Garcia. What's, who's the other one? Um, I can't remember the, the other one, the other guy's name. He's in Close Encounters, but I can't remember his name now. Uh, he's also a filmmaker as well. Um, and Robert De Niro as... as uh, I was going to say Robert De Niro is Al Pacino, but Robert De Niro is Al Capone. Even you get a really sinister, creepy um, performance from. I can't remember his name. He died. Billy Drago. Billy Drago, who's in all these really crappy, low budget action movies as the villain and stuff. He plays a sinister motherfucker uh, in um, Untouchables. But then he followed up Untouchables with um, Carlito's Way. Another fantastic Al Pacino performance. Sean Penn is almost unrecognisable. Um, it's got Benny from the Bl Benny from the Bronx, played by John Leguizamo, who I think this was one of his first movies. 
just a great gangster movie all around. Um, this, I think, is the only release we've had in the UK. I mean, it's been released multiple different times, but I think it's still the same release. It's just had different packaging and stuff. Um, this has got uh, a couple of deleted scenes. An insider's perspective with the director, Brian De Palma, on Carly Toe's Way and the making of Carly Toe's Way and in-depth interviews with cast and crew um, and how it reveals Carly Toe's journey from novel to screen. Uh, the movie runs for... Where is it? It was just to put the runtime. Oh, two hours and 24 minutes. Sorry, I just spent the entire video just looking down at the back of a Blu-ray case. But that's Carly Toe's Way. Um, so Carly Toe's Way, Cliffhanger, <coughs> and um, The Iron Giant came to about 14 quid, I think it was. So that's not too bad. Pepsi break. So then these next three only came in today. I say came in. Only arrived today. And these are from Amazon Germany. All of these are upgrades. Actually, one is sort of an upgrade because I don't think I have the DVD anymore. But the first one uh, is, um, and I know this is available in the UK, it was released by Second Sight, it is, uh, the German is Nummer 5 Libt or Ipt. In other words, Short Circuit 1, starring Steve Gutenberg, Ali Sheedy. Fucking love Short Circuit. Would really like to get Short Circuit 2. Um, this is the, again, this is the German Blu-ray. Uh, only came today. Fisher Stevens is in this as well. Fisher Stevens is the, the main sort of character in um, Short Circuit 2. He's also in Lost and uh, he plays Mr. The Plague in, where is it? In Hackers. It's all the way down there. I'm not going to get it out. <laughs> so yeah, I was, I was like, I don't have this on Blu-ray. I don't know if I've got it on DVD, even though it's fucking short circuit. Why haven't I got it? It's an 80s classic. So I was just like, you know what? It's 6 dollars 6 euros and 99 I'm just going to take a punt and get it because I love Short Circuit and I don't understand why I don't own it. The next is a movie that I have talked about. I talked about uh, in a video I did um, ages back now, like three months ago, where I went over some hidden gems that uh, I think deserve to be reevaluated. And uh, this is an upgrade. This is Charlie Sheen in The Arrival. Absolutely fantastic science fiction film. To me, it is coming up to um, sort of Two and a Half Men era. I think this is probably Charlie Sheen's best offering post Hot Shots Part 2, I guess, because I don't think he really did. I mean, he made The Chase... Um, in the early 90s and it kind of made some shitty action movies like Terminal Velocity, which is a terrible movie. Um, but uh, The Arrival, I think, is probably his best 90s or post um, uh, Hot Shots uh, 90s work. And uh, I think a lot of people should check this out because it is very cool. It's very X-Files-y and it's, it's kind of hard sci-fi. It kind of reminds me a little bit of... Um, the Tommy Knockers and uh, Robert Zemeckis' um, Contact. Uh, but there's also some X-Files thrown in, in there. And I don't know if you remember the show from the, the 90s called Dark Skies. It only ran for one season, um, which was about uh, the cover-up of the Area 51 and all that stuff. Great show. Can't believe it got uh, cancelled. But yeah, it kind of reminded me of that, and um, it is a very, very cool film. I think this is this makes a really, really good, creepy sci-fi double bill with um, Fire in the Sky, another like alien abduction movie from the mid '90s, which I think and uh, more people need to check out because it is amazing. But um, the Arrival is a fantastic film. Uh, there's not much in the way of special features on this. In fact, I don't think there are, there's any. But this is released by. Um, NSM Records under release, well, under uh, license from um, Lionsgate. It is a 12, FSK 12. Uh, the really cool thing about these German releases is that 90% of the 
Blu-rays have reversible sleeves. So if you want to get rid of that massive FSK logo at the bottom, you can just flip the sleeve over. Um, so yeah, love this movie. Really looking forward to checking this out in high definition because it's such a good film. Uh, and the last one from Germany is again another animated movie. Um, this is an animated film that uh, I've owned on DVD. In fact, I owned a DVD on the old Woolworths Seen It uh, release. Um, basically, the way they did it is they, they put the DVD cover shrunk down in the centre of the screen and then a big white box around it in a red case with, I think it was like, I think it just said Woolworths Seen or Seen It. S E. Uh, S C E N E, like the like the video game, and I I don't even know where that is. I think I might have binned it years ago. But um, this is uh, Don Bluth's fantastic first movie as a uh, animation director for his his own company. It's the Secret of Nim, or as it's known in Germany, Mrs. Brisby und das Geheimnis von Nim. Sorry if I butchered that to anyone who's from Germany that reads this. I don't speak German. I'm I'm Welsh. Don't even speak Welsh. I speak English. Uh, I love this film. It's been many years since I saw it. And uh, I was watching a documentary on Don Bluth the other day. It was in five parts from a couple of years ago. And it was very, very interesting stuff. Um, apparently, Disney, turned, Disney were trying to make this at one point. But ended up turning down an offer to make it uh, eventually because they thought that the subject material was too dark for them. Uh, which is, it's, it's, considering this came out in what, 1982, I think this came out. And I believe around the same time, maybe 1983, 1984, um, Disney made uh, Black Cauldron, <clears throat> which I don't know why they're trying to bury that movie because the Black Cauldron is a great fantasy animated movie. And uh, it's it's mind-boggling that they can go to a t turn down something like the Secret of Nim, and then go on to make um, Black Cauldron, which is is really horrific when you really think about the the imagery that's in that film compared to the imagery that's in I don't know the film that either preceded it or the film that followed it, which would either be the Fox and the Hound and or, or Oliver and Company, or Basil the Great Mouse Detective. But um, The Secret of Nim, yeah, kick-started Don Bluth. I mean, he followed this up with Land, uh, Land Before Time and American Tale, and then uh, went on to do the absolutely stunning animated movie, which I don't know if anyone's seen, but it's um, Anastasia. Uh, this is a terrible, terrible cover. Uh, I don't know why the cover has such god-awful artwork on the front. But um, absolutely gorgeous movie this is. Like, the animation on that is just... Oh, it's just... Like, pinnacle of independent animated movies in the uh, in the 90s. I mean, DreamWorks came out with some decent stuff as well. Like, Road to El Dorado was amazing. Um, Sinbad was not so great. Prince of Egypt's pretty good, although the, the uh, character design is quite off. I don't really like that. But there was always something about Don Bluth's animated style, like his style of animation, like his character design and stuff like that, which always stood out to me slightly more than uh, like the Disney stuff, especially with the Disney Renaissance um, stuff. So stuff like uh, Beauty and the Beast and um, like Aladdin and The Little Mermaid, like Lion, well, maybe not so, not so much The Lion King because that movie is absolutely gorgeous. But there was like a dark, rough grimness to uh, Bluth's like style of animated movies. Like let, when you really look at like The Secret of Nim is quite a dark movie, um, especially even subject matter wise. Uh, like the American Tale is is about a child that has to find his way, uh, find his parents after. Something happens on a trip to well, when they leave Russia to go to America, and um, again that's dark. Comes up against cats that are trying to kill him. 
maybe not so much the Five Goes West, which is a lot more lighter and in tone and a lot more fun. But still, American Tale is a, is a gorgeous movie. And then something like The Land Before Time, where uh, a, a baby dinosaur's mother is killed and he has to, along with his friends, travel across a desolate dinosaur-strewn earth to find the hidden valley. I mean, all the, these three movies are just really dark. But I'm really looking forward to checking out The Secret of Nim on uh, on Blu-ray. Um, this does have quite a few uh, s special features. I can't, like I said, I can't read German. Um, I mean, there's a feature out on there, uh, and there's audio commentary with Don Bluth and Gary Goldman, um, who uh, directed the Dinosaur Story. We're back. We're back. A Dinosaur Story. I think he did that, and I think he did Fern Gully as well. And I think there's some like trailers and stuff on there as well. But um, I mean, there's the back. You can see quite a lot of stuff. But yeah, that's one I'm really looking forward to checking out because it's been a long time since I saw The Secret of Nim. And I think I saw the last time I saw it properly was on, a, like I said, that really bare bones kind of budget Woolworths release. Um, these last three are two upgrades and uh, one... Uh, New edition, not a upgrade. Uh, even though it's a film I have seen before, this is not an upgrade. It is an addition, first time edition. Um, these are all from uh, Powerhouse Films on the indicator label, um, because that company has the most amazing, like three for twenty offers that seem to be constantly on, <laughs> and. That's where most of my powerhouse movies have come from. They've come from 3 for 20 or I think it was 5 for 40 at one point they did. Um, so the first one is the uh, new addition, like the adding to a collection for the first time. And it's uh, The Mysterious Island. Uh, this was directed by Cy Enfield. And it stars uh, Michael Craig, Joan Greenwood, Michael Callan, Gary Merrill. Beth Rogan and Herbert Lom as uh, Captain Nemo. Uh, visual effects by Ray Harryhausen. Love Ray Harryhausen stuff. I've got... Um, which one is it? Where is it? I didn't have Sinbad. Sinbad in the Eye of the Tiger. I love that movie. I do. I, I think I've got Sinbad. The Seven Voyages of Sinbad and Clash of the Titans. I know I've got the, uh, the 1980s uh, Clash of the Titans. Which also does have Harryhausen's uh, stop motion work in it as well, um, but yeah, Mysterious Island. I've actually been listening to the uh, Audible audiobook of Mysterious Island, and when I saw that it was on the uh, three for twenty, I was just like, you know what, I'm going to get it. So this is number fifty-one um, of the Indicator label. Um, there is a fuck ton of special features. I don't don't know if you can see all the this entire box here is all special features. Lovely artwork on the front, which I'm assuming is taken from the original poster art. And, uh, yeah, really looking forward to checking that one out. The next is a uh, replacement for a um, Old Anchor Bay, is it? I think it was an Old Anchor Bay DVD uh, of this. And uh, I really liked this film when I saw it, for the, when, I, when I saw it on DVD. And uh, it's an Amicus production starring Calvin Lockhart and Peter Cushing. It is The Beast Must Die. Again, this was in the 3 for 20. Um, really like this film. It's sort of like the most dangerous game, but with werewolves, which is kind of a really cool concept. Um, also, it's just a great little horror film from the 70s. I think it was 1974. Yeah. Uh, directed by Paul Annette and written by Michael Winder, or Winder. I guess. Um, it's got Charles Gray in it as well, Anton Differing, uh, Calvin Lockhart and Peter Cushing. Uh, produced by Max J. Rosenberg and Milton Zabowski. Um, I like that like in the 70s, the UK had two like major like horror uh, production companies like Hammer and Amicus. And they would like kind of fight each other. In, like, it'd be like a horror movie fight club between Amicus and Hammer. And while we all know Hammer movies succeeded because they made the better films, there are some absolute awesome gems of classic horror that Amicus produced as well. And uh, yeah, so really glad I've got the um, Beast Must Die 
added to the collection in high definition. Really like to see this. This is a 4K restoration. And again, there are an absolute boatload of uh, special features on here. I'm not going to go through them all because I ain't got the time. But again, I really like the artwork and it's just another film I'm glad to have in the collection. Now this one, this last one, is an upgrade because I recently watched the DVD of this and um, it looked all right. The DVD was pretty good, but it was one that I was like, I really need to get this on Blu-ray. I know the Powerhouse have released it and I've also listened to the Easy Rollins uh, audiobooks, which is, again, why I... What put me in the in the in the mind to pick this film up, and uh, it is the Devil in the Blue Dress with um, Denzel Washington, written and directed by Carl Franklin, uh, produced by Jonathan Demme, and it also stars the late Tom Sizemore, Jennifer Beals, Don Cheadle, and Maury Chaykin. Uh, music by Alma Bernstein, and uh, this is a 2K restoration with the original 5.1 surround sound. Audio commentary writer director Carl Franklin from 1999, so it hasn't re uh, recorded a new one. Dancing with the Devil, a 23 minute uh, documentary from 2018, and uh, just quite a, a lot of other smaller um, special features. Now, I'm really glad that I did get this because I thought this was out of print. Everywhere that I'd seen, it was going from stupid money. So, like the fact that it's now on the standard edition. And it was in stock, and I'm now able to add this to the collection. Again, this is number 221, 20, 221. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just so glad that this is there. I'd love to see Powerhouse do more of these sort of, like, 90s, 80s, 90s noir sort of movies, and maybe some more neo-noir stuff from the, from the 90s, the 80s and the 90s. Um, so yeah, that's the, uh, that's the, the pickups for, I want to say the month, but we're only halfway through February, probably the month though, but that's the pickups for the month. I'm slowly condensing down the DVDs. I don't know if you can see this, but there is a hundred movies there, all in sleeves. I'm condensing them down mainly because I haven't got the room. I can't, I've got to, like I said, I've got to pack a lot of stuff up. I'm going to have to move at some point this year and um, I can't cart 9,000 movies with me. So that's why I'm doing that. But thank you all for watching. Um, it seems to be that the movies that well, the videos that get the most traction and the ones that people seem to be more interested in are the physical media ones, not necessarily the film recommendations. So I'm going to try and um, focus more on the physical media side. I've got a couple of ideas for, mo for, for videos, um, one about bootlegs and one about... Um, I can't remember now. It's all on the list on my uh, on my phone. But um, yeah, I want to thank everyone for watching, everyone for subscribing, for commenting and engaging in the community tab. Um, I'll be back soon. And for the now, as usual, peace. I'm out.